Who wants to read? Somebody read a couple of scriptures? What I'm going to do, is I'm going to do it a little different than I had. We read them all at once. I'm going to do it like one at a time. Okay? Genesis 2.17. Genesis 2.17. Michelle, can you get Revelations 21, 9 through 11? Yes. Who's got Genesis 2, 17? Revelations 21, 9 through 11. Brother Max? It's 21, 9 through 11. Brother, can you get Jeremiah 3, 9? And Pastor, can you get Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 7 and 11? Thanks. I, I want to share something this morning that is uh, again, it seems like it has three aspects. And I want to uh, I want to take my time. This is something I feel like all three aspects have to be heard. By this generation, it's not necessarily this congregation, but by this generation. The last days are, are perilous. In, in their in their nature, their perils. Paul warns of it. Peter warns of it. Jesus warns of it. False prophets, false doctrines, many, many, many things taking place. Men's hearts getting cold. Many things happening in the last days. But I want to raise up a, a voice today. I want to speak concerning the glory of God. I want to declare something. You may know it, you may not know it. But this is the word of God that has been set in motion. The word of God, hallelujah, from generation to generation to generation, this thing has been moving. This plan is moving. You can't stop this plan. The devil can't stop this plan. Nothing can stop this plan. God set it in motion. Brother Max, Genesis 2.17. For in a day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. I may have given you the wrong scripture, so just hold your place. I'm going to go there. All right. I actually want to uh, uh, verse 18. Also, also yes. Eighteen says, and the Lord God said, Hallelujah. Eighteen says, and the Lord God said, It is not good that the man, the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Amen. I'm talking about something that started in the heart of God. This didn't just apply to Adam. It didn't just apply to mankind to come. This is something that was in the heart of God. God made man in his, in, in, in his own image. In the image of God made he him. Male and female created he them. This is something that started with God. 
he looked upon man and he said, it's not good for this man to be alone. Let me make a help me for him. Let me make somebody that's worthy of him. Let me make some, somebody that's suitable for him. Somebody that can be his companion. Somebody that can walk with him. Somebody that will hear and hear. They'll do this thing together. You say, well, that's not much of a mystery. This is what it is. Adam was made in the image of God. Adam was the first man. Christ is the second man. Jesus was, God was looking at Adam and speaking over him. But his words were a spirit of prophecy that reached, reached through all of the ages, even until the end of time. He was talking about, hallelujah, this man, Jesus. His prophetic word went out to Jesus. He said, it's not good for you that you be alone. It's not good that you be the only one that is righteous. The only one that can do these things. That can manifest the glory of God. He said, I'm going to make you a helpmeet. He set the thing in motion. That's the first part of prophetic declaration concerning the bride of Christ. I'm going to make you a helpmeet. Somebody that can come out of him. Somebody that can walk with him. Somebody that is, he, is his equal. Somebody that he can be incontinent with. Somebody that, that manifests the same righteousness, the same revealing, the same substance as the man. That's the church. The church came out of Christ. We, we have been given his DNA. Bone of his bone. Substance of his substance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We didn't, he, he didn't raise up a beast or an animal and said, okay, this is going to be your helping. He made something out of his own being. And he said, now you're going to be married to her. And you two shall become one. That, my friend, is a prophecy. Hallelujah. Set forth over Jesus Christ, who is a manifestation and a revealing of the Father. And until time ends, this manifestation is going to be the manifestation of the Father. All creation bows before this manifestation. If we were to go to heaven now, we would see the image of Jesus Christ. We would see his substance. So we're called, we're, we're, we're brought out of his substance. And we're called to be the bride of Christ. We're called to be a people special made to a standard that, that nothing else has ever been made to. Made, literally made to manifest the glory of God himself. Able to do works of righteousness. Hallelujah. Not our righteousness, but the righteousness really that comes from obedience. It comes out of the spirit and is manifested. It's the righteousness of God manifested in my body and your body. Amen. And, and God didn't do this thing in a vacuum. He didn't do this thing where there was no pressure. He did this thing... Young people, where did he do this? First, 
the first verse that we memorized. In the beginning, it says there was darkness covered the earth. He went right into the midst of the pit. He went right into the midst of the powers of darkness. He went right into the place, hallelujah, glory to God that, that stood against him with all rebellion, with all resistance, defying him. And he said, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to bring forth, hallelujah, a people that are going to look just like me. They're going to walk like me. They're going to speak like me. They're going to declare my glory. He did it right in the midst of darkness God loves a good fight he never ran from anything in his life hallelujah I believe when he set this thing in motion he's got a sense of humor I believe he was saying devil if this is all you got come on give it to me and the devil came, and mankind fell. But God is all wisdom, not the devil. God has all wisdom. He played right into his hands. Hallelujah. Okay. Understand what, hallelujah, there was something set in motion in the very beginning, something prophetic, something that includes you and me, something that we really honestly cannot understand. How can flesh and blood, hallelujah, be, be yoked with the very person of God? How is that possible? How can it ever be? I'm frail, I'm fraught, I'm tempted. But yet the glory of God and the power of God and the wisdom of God is able to bring me and you, each one of us, into this place where this revelation of the bride is, it, it comes to its fullness. Hallelujah. Rochelle. Revelations 21, 9 through 11. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plague, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her spirit was like to a stone most precious, like a jasper, clear as crystal. I know I took a couple a couple of verses out of that passage. But consider this scene took place in heaven. And the angel said, Come, I'm gonna show you this bride. And he looked and there was a city. A city coming down out of heaven to the earth. And her glory was the glory of God. Not the glory of religion, not the glory of whatever we, the best presentation that we can give. Something had happened. Our change had come. Hallelujah. God's word was fulfilled. Hallelujah. This thing was now visible. The bride had taken her place. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. The, the, the marriage had come. Something had been done. Hallelujah. The word was fulfilled. It's not good for this man to dwell alone. I'll make for you. Hallelujah. Glory. A, 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 a help me. Here she is. Hallelujah. This city coming down from heaven. The glory. Hallelujah of this city is in its, it's unimagined can't can't know what it is but i challenge you to read those scriptures and consider this is the glory that was in the heart of the father when he set the whole thing in motion didn't 
didn't just start with redemption. Redemption was part of the plan. There had to be a revealing of his heart. Hallelujah. And that was in Jesus Christ. There had to be a, a, a purchasing out of the realm of darkness. A people. 1,500 miles that direction. 1,500 miles that direction. And 1,500 miles that direction. Like nothing you ever seen. I got no clue. Her gates were pearls. Her foundation were of, of many precious stones. We don't know what these things are. I am saying the plan of God is precious. The calling and the purpose over the church is precious. This thing is past our knowing. The value of it. The glory of it. It's past our knowing. Hallelujah. Brother DeMille. Three nine. Because Israel and mortality mattered so little to her. She defined the land that committed adultery with stone and wood. Jeremiah 3 9. Yes. Maybe, maybe it was just the translation. Let me read another translation. Yeah, yeah, let me read it. I have it here. Okay. And I said. How I long to make you my sons and give you a desirable land, the most beautiful inheritance of all the nations. I thought you would call me father and never turn away from following me. I may have had the wrong verse. That's okay. okay. That's the one I wanted. Uh, how I long to make you my sons and give you a design of the land. The most beautiful inheritance. How I long to make you part of that number. That run the race and finish the race. Hallelujah. Amen. How I long. I thought you would call me my father and never turn away from following me. That's the heart of the father over you and me, over everyone in the church. It's a heart of desire. It's a heart that wants to bless. He wants to father us. He wants to protect us. He wants to, he wants to bring us through all of the stuff in our life and into his life. He wants to be a good father to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Bill. I read the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 7 and 11. Just 7 and 11. So I can read from 7. Just 7 and 11. 7. Yeah. And I brought you into plentiful land enjoy its fruits and its good things. But when you come in, you define my land and make my heritage an abomination. Yeah. And as the nation changes its God, even though they are no God, but my people can change the glory. For that which does not profit. And yeah. Yeah. So there's a great difference in scripture between called and chosen. 
Those that are called, God opens the door very wide. And he said, just come. All you have to do is come and really bow before my son. Take hold of him. That's all you're going to do. He doesn't care about the past. He doesn't care about the history. That's all you're going to do. But the choosing requires something else. That speaks to a life lived. It speaks to a faith kept. A consecration, you know, that's manifesting. It speaks to something. There's your, your heart becomes manifested in your life. Your, your word doesn't stay, stand alone, but your life comes and shows it forth. And step by step by step, hallelujah, we make our journey. The chosen make their journey. And they end up in the fulfillment realm. This is what I want to speak. The first thing is what has been given to us. It's been given freely, but it cost us everything. We don't play games. We cannot play games. We need to press into the kingdom. We need to press into the life of God. We press in. The things that press against us, the things that offer resistance are this world, yes. But even before that, it's our, our own fleshly nature. There's a change that has to come in you and me. I'm a man, but I need to put on sonship. I'm a man, but I can't manifest a man. I have to manifest a son. There's a change, and that's a battleground. That's a battleground in our mind. That's a battleground in our emotion. Hear what he says. God set the thing in motion. I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit and the goodness of it. But when you entered, he said, you defiled my land and made my heritage a bondage. Here's the thing. This literally is a battleground. I don't know how else to say it. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they crossed over into the promised land. Quite a journey they went through. They crossed over into the promised land. The scripture says that he raised up armies that would come against them. So that those that had not known the sounds of war would put on experience in battle. Why did he do that? Because it speaks prophetically to you and me. There is great opposition against this thing. It starts in the midst of us, but it's all around us. We walk in the midst of this world. We walk in the midst of temptation. We stand in America and, and there's ease everywhere. There's things everywhere that says, come follow me. Come partake of me. It's everywhere. Okay. There's a dilemma in the church. And you know by now that that's, that's part of what God has, has given me is a word concerning the, the state of the church. And I'm speaking again, bear with me, even if this doesn't apply to you, and I, I believe it applies to all of us, but it's this generation. There's a work that has to take place in this generation. And every last one of us have a, have a we have an opportunity, and I believe more than an opportunity. We have a requirement to be involved in that work. 
And this is what I'm talking about. I had a dream once. Let me, sh let me share. God gave me a dream. And it was very, it was very profound. But I and a few people were in this house and just going about daily business. And I understood it was the house of God in my spirit. And as we were going around, there was a few things that happened. There was a lion cub, just a little cute little cuddly thing that was, that was there. And it was so cute, it was so cuddly. And, and everyone was playing with it and that kind of thing. Then the other thing that happened was that somebody discovered a serpent. And it was coiled up. And I cast it out. And then we began to search and there was other serpents. And we took them out. Then I said, you know, I got to get this lion cub out of here. So I grabbed the lion cub. And it was just a cute little thing. And I walked to the door. And what happened was, the closer I got to the door, the more it grew. And the more it turned into a full-grown lion. And I opened the door to put him out. And the door swung on its hinge. And I saw that there was one screw left in the hinge. And I thrust the thing out. And when I did, I saw, I looked to my left, and I saw people coming out of a lit place and walking right past me into a great darkness. And this is the interpretation that God gave me. That even now, there are many false doctrines in the church. There are many things that do not bear the scrutiny of the scripture. Now is the time for us to understand the doctrine that God has set forth, hallelujah, in the scripture. And to not partake of any of these other things. They're poisonous. They will kill us. The lion was, this is what I, I didn't see it for the longest time. And then I felt this, the Holy Spirit say that the lion is our flesh. There's a place in, in religion where our flesh can stand. Our flesh has practices that are accommodated by the church. But Jesus said that our Father seeks those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. Our worship, our practices, we've been in places where, you know, donuts were served before service. Been in places where the word of God had not even the minister had not even closed the Bible and they were doing putting coffee and donuts on and refreshments. The lines get blurred, hallelujah. People walk in graces that belong to this realm, to the, to the realm of men. They walk in uh, smarts, technologies, that kind of thing. They walk in all of these graces. Some can speak so they become pastors. No, hallelujah. Those things belong in this realm. God's got another realm that belongs in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I saw, I saw this. I used to do carpentry, so that's, I'm sure that's why God gave me that portion of that dream. 
But when you when you have a door in the hinge and you take all of the screws out but one, you can set that door. And the door is Jesus Christ for you and me. He can look just like he's in the right place and that he's going to function properly. The door is to let people out or to keep people out and to let people in. And that's what Jesus does. And he can look just like he's in his right place. But if you take the door and you begin to open, you see that there's, and, and, and when I saw that in a flash, it went through me, we've been sabotaged. Something has taken place. And what it is, is doctrines. Doctrines that were established by Jesus Christ and the apostles, but are no longer found, hallelujah, in this age. It looks like we're all speaking the same thing, but I'm saying there's a gospel, hallelujah, hallelujah, that, that belongs in the spirit. It doesn't belong to any denomination. It doesn't belong to any church. It belongs in the spirit. God is still speaking Jesus Christ and him crucified. Scripture says, godliness with contentment's great gain. We have doctrines now that say, if you don't prosper in your monies, you don't have salvation. That's false. But there's millions and millions of people sitting under that doctrine. That is a serpent in the house of God. And on and on it goes. We could teach about those things sometime. But so the present, I call it the dilemma of the church. Where do we stand? I've served the Lord for 40 years, 42 years. Where am I? What's going on? We're in an age now where people are really saying that everything is acceptable. Don't dig your, you know, don't push against the norm. Tolerate on the left and tolerate on the right. I will love, but pastor, I'm going to speak the scripture. I'm going to speak Jesus Christ in him crucified. That's, that's life to me. present dilemma of the church. Where are the gifts of the Spirit? When was the last time in a, in a corporate gathering, when was the last time that there was tongues and interpretation or prophecy? How active and how manifested in yours and mine and in this generation. How manifested is the power of the kingdom? We're in a place where it's very easy to go to the drugstore. Very easy to go to the doctor. I don't have to believe. The power of the kingdom. God said it in the church. It's part of the glory of God to be revealed in the church. Where is it? I know. I, I'm not. I'm asking the question. Every sickness, every disease, every devil. We don't like to talk about the devil. Let me tell you something. The realm that we're, in, that we're in is full of darkness. Men are oppressed. Men are possessed. Men are depressed. 
He's everywhere, working all kind of works. It says that for this reason was the Son of God made manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. We have got to know, hallelujah, that the power, hallelujah, of God that was given to Jesus Christ has now been given to you and me. Amen. If we don't see ourselves, this is none of what I'm saying is a place of incrimination. We're in a time of fasting. Part of our fast needs to be lifting up a voice. Hallelujah. Father, hallelujah. We're looking at these things and it doesn't line up. Hallelujah. Let your hand be upon us no matter what it takes. Bring forth something new. Bring forth your will and your purpose in the bride of Christ. Your glory. Let those that are bound, hallelujah, be set free. Ask the questions. Ask the questions. False doctrines everywhere. Don't believe everything you say. You're looking at a big name preacher on TV. Don't believe everything you say. Is he all flash? And, and does he sound good? And his words sound good? Don't believe everything you say. Let me tell you something. The, the, the broken spirit is, is more precious than the skillful tongue. Amen. Amen. Judge the spirit. Has the man been worked on? I see the, the work of the Holy Ghost in you. God will work it all out. He'll perfect. He'll strengthen. He'll accomplish his will. But I see that he's already, hallelujah, been able to do something with you. I would, be, I would receive and believe the word that comes out of your mouth more than I would out of the flash guy with, hallelujah, all the gold and the pomp. And look at me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Judge, hallelujah, judge. Don't stand as, as, as children, hallelujah, in this hour. Understand that there is a great warfare. It says that Satan, hallelujah, was cast into the earth and he had great wrath because he knew his time was short. He is after you and me. Am I afraid? No. I'm saying, God, get me into the place I need to be, where I'm clothed with the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. With the fire of God that is in me and the jealousy of God that is in me. And when I say me, I'm talking about whosoever would. Hallelujah. It's greater than anything. There's all kinds of things that are in the world today. Homosexuality. Of every kind, every kind of deviancy, everything has gained its traction and, and, and attention is given. Oh, hallelujah to God. Amen. The numbers are rising. The voices are getting louder. Hallelujah. The servants of God begin to shrink before it. Hallelujah. That's not the right thing. Glory to God. These things are works of the devil. Hallelujah. In the, in the realm of, 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 of men. And I'm saying there's an answer. The answer was manifest in Jesus Christ and must be manifest in you and me. Amen. Where are the sinners? I'm not talking somebody come up and recite a prayer. I'm talking some, of somebody that is convicted by the Holy Ghost and they make their approach with a, an air of desperation and tears are coming down their face and they're saying, I need something. Where are the sinners? When is the last time that God spoke to you? I'm not saying these things to incriminate. These things, he just said it. He said, I wanted to be a father to you. There's not one father alive that doesn't speak to their children, that doesn't continually have input into their children. Not one father alive. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and I, almost without ceasing. When was the last time? Hear what I'm saying. 
Something has happened to the church. It's not all things good. It's not, we cannot continue. We have to pray like we've never prayed. We cannot address our lives like it's just going to be business and usual and this work is going to, it's going to receive, you know, two hours or five, four hours of my time a week and that's enough. There is a, there's something greater than this work that God's looking at. There's this bride, hallelujah, glory to God, incomparable glory, incomparable worth. He's got to bring forth this bride. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. But I look in this congregation and I can tell you there's people on here that should be here. In this congregation, there's people being drawn out and being drawn away. We're in a fight. We've already taken blows. It says while he tarried, hallelujah, they all slept. Be it wise, be it foolish, they all slept. But then there went forth a cry, hallelujah. And now I feel within me there is a cry, hallelujah, wake up. Understand, hallelujah, that, that darkness seeks to snuff out light, but light is always greater than darkness. Amen. The glory that is in you and I, hallelujah, must be unclothed, must shine forth, hallelujah. It's the hope of this world. I hate religion. Something false. Something pretensive. I'm going to show myself and give a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And God's going to be satisfied and everybody will think I'm good. It's rubbish. If we continue in that, we will reap the same reward as the sinner. Don't think you're going to be part of that. I can't think this thing burns in me. I'm not part of that number. Unless I take my cross and allow the Spirit of God to work His will in me. I got, I'm telling you, there's a scripture, hallelujah. A man came to Jesus and he said, he said, are there many to be saved? Jesus said, strive. To enter in. He said, because many seek to enter in and they cannot. He said, they're not able. He said, strive to enter in. That word in the Greek, hallelujah, is agon. It means it's the same word our word agonize comes out of. Agony comes out of. It means great duress. It means great intensity. It means great effort struggle, pain, whatever it is, but there's something real and desperate, hallelujah, in that thing. The other is more of an inquiry. It's more of a desire. I desire to know about this. I desire, there's something that is very controlled and very undesperate in that approach. And Jesus says, you'll not be able to enter in. Hallelujah. Amen. I have, I have many. I read the scripture. I think the last time I was here, but in Lamentations, it says, how is the gold, the, the gold become dim? The precious sons of Zion, the precious church, once esteemed as more precious than gold, is now seen to be Nothing more than an earthen, an earthen vessel. Hear what I'm saying. There's something taking place. And we have to join. We have to commit. There's something very great. I love the fact that you're fasting. Hallelujah. And we fasted with you. But 
this thing. There needs to be intercession. There needs to be taking hold of God until something changes. We cannot stand without these questions being answered. Where are the sinners? This isn't about you and me just being saved. God wants to bring many sons unto glory. Hallelujah. So, here we have. Scripture says examine yourself. Examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. That's what fasting is all about. It's a place of fellowship that you can draw near and God can speak into you. Your heart becomes more open and he can speak into you. And we need God to speak into us. Where am I? Am I doing everything I need to do? Am I loving you the way that I, I not just that I need to love you, but that you're worthy? Or is there something shallow? I, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Let me just read it off my paper. In Isaiah 52, uh, verses 1 and 2. He says, awake, awake. Put on your strength. I can feel the Spirit of God. Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. This gown of righteousness. This gown of a right response to the Spirit of God. Put it on. Join the number. Hallelujah. Shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from the element of the world. Shake yourself from the mentality that you're just a mere man. Shake yourself from the things that come in and grip that we're confined. I just it's declared and the scripture declares, hallelujah, there's another purpose. It's so great. It's so high. Oh, hallelujah. You look, but you can't understand it. it, it it's like somebody speaking in another language. Don't sell yourself short. Malia, God sees you. The things that I'm speaking are truth. If one would fall away on the left, or one would fall away on the right, these things are given unto you. Hold them. Draw near. If you haven't begun a journey with the Lord Jesus, put it in motion. Take hold of him. And don't ever let it go. Hallelujah. I wanted to close with the scripture that I love. It's in Philippians 3. This is the Apostle Paul, which he wasn't just all pomp and circumstances. He wasn't, he wasn't untried. He was not. He was not. He came out of violence. He came out of murder in his heart. He came out of these things. God put him through the paces. He put him through the ringer. He had so much to lose. But hear what he said. This was a great man of God. I'm going to read a few verses. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, 
and I do come to the dumb that I might win Christ. And be found in him this hallelujah, this revelation of the bride and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith that I might know him religion doesn't insist that you know him you and I have to know him that's part of our calling my sheep know my voice another they'll not follow hallelujah and the power of his resurrection what does that mean to 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 me it means that i have power if i am entered into his life that into, entered into his death i have power hallelujah to be raised as a new creature i'm no longer bound by the things that bind men i may yield my members hallelujah or i may yield my members unto righteousness but i have a power working within me glory to god hallelujah we've talked about an exalted will well this power that works in me hallelujah is able to raise you and i up hallelujah in glory and in stature glory to god until this will this marvelous will is fulfilled the power of his resurrection i'm not just a dead man hallelujah he's breathed on me and there's a life in me i can rise I, I may have to fight through many things but there's still a power in me hallelujah and the fellowship of his sufferings we can't choose the easy way our Lord had nails pounded through his hands and feet, a throne thrust down onto his head. He didn't deserve any of it. I can't desire and, and hold and covet after a life of ease. I can't do it. The fellowship of his sufferings. I don't care what those sufferings are. Pastor, you're in places of sufferings. Brother DeMille, you are in a place of suffering. Guess what? It wasn't all bad. It worked things in your spirit. Work things in your spirit. It's working many things. It's the mark of the cross. Hallelujah. I haven't even got to the scripture I want to get to yet. Being made conformable unto his death. Here. If by any means, Apostle Paul, if by any means, if by any means, I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Slam dunk? No. It's not what came out of his mouth. He said, if by any means, I'm going to go through the water, and I'm going to go through the fire. I'm going to go through hunger, and I'm going to go through the threatenings of men. I'm going to go through all things, if by any means. Hear what he's saying. He was, his eyes were on a precious prize. He cast off on the left and the right. He had to get the prize. Not as though I had already attained. One of the biggest fallacies and the biggest false doctrines in the world today is a doctrine called the doctrine of eternal security. It's damnable and it comes out of the pit of fire. God's grace is sufficient to take you from day one to the last day. If you stay on his way, he said there is a way. If you stay in that way, then the Spirit of God will never, ever leave you. And he will, He's powerful to prevail over you and I. Amen. But if we begin to choose another way, if we begin to go another path, He doesn't even then leave us. All you've got to do is read the Old Testament. 
He will fight with us. He will push against us. He will afflict us. He will do many things to bring us into a place of righteousness with him. I hate that doctrine. All you got to do is come up, repeat that to me. Now you are saved and you're going to be in that number. Oh no. The scripture said he's going to make a woman that is meat for the man. That woman has to be holy. That woman has to be clean. That woman has to look just like he. Just like him. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Honestly, this is not about you and me. It's not. We just need to be in the path. We need to drink from the well. We need to sit at this table. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehending. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press. Oh, I don't really feel like going to service today. I press. Oh. Time for prayer. I, I don't feel like prayer this morning. I press. There will be times of weakness and discouragement and hopelessness and many things. But I press. I'm not going to be stopped. I'm going to fight my way through all of the obstacles and I'm going to get to that city. I'm in the city, but I have to cross the line. I cannot be overcome by darkness. That's the Apostle Paul speaking. Man of God. I don't count myself to have apprehended. To the very last day, doesn't mean I live in uncertainty. Doesn't mean that I live in a fear of failure. Doesn't mean that at all. It means at any time, if I begin to serve another God and worship another God, that I have broken my vow, my marriage vow with my Lord. Even then, he's merciful. That's the word that I had. It's threefold. Look at and consider the glorious thing that God purposed. We really have no idea what it is. But it's shown in scripture in a few places. And then it's kind of like, wake up and smell the coffee. We're fasting now. There's no better time to allow the spirit of God to, to show us what's happening in this generation. that my last day, it doesn't stop with apparently the works, you know, the church being defeated. It doesn't stop. He said the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. It doesn't stop. Inside of you and me, there's a spirit living and burning. I'm saying let it burn. I'm saying let it grow. Young and old, it doesn't make any difference. As soon as you're able to make a decision, make a decision. Present your life as a living sacrifice unto the Lord Jesus. And, and, and take your sides. Okay? Amen, Amen. God is good. All the time.